Hi, my name is Matt Reisinger with Reisinger Homes. Welcome to my video blog dedicated to building science and fine craftsmanship. I want to talk to you today about a real basic thing that most homeowners are neglecting on their house, maintaining their tankless water heaters. These Renai tankless water heaters are great uh, water heaters. We've been using them for about 10 years now in my houses. I really like them but they do need to be maintained. You wanna know that these water heaters, if they're in a hard water area like Austin, Texas, they need to be flushed about every 12 to 18 months, depending on your use. So if you're a family of two, you might be able to go 18 months before, before you uh, flush these. If you're a larger family of three or four, you might wanna flush these about every 12 months. If you don't, you're gonna have some scale buildup in these boilers. That scale is gonna throw off into your systems and boy, does it make a mess. I'll lace in a photo of a, uh, some scale on a house that I helped out uh, where we had to take all the uh, washer faucets off, or pardon me, the uh, aerators off, including the thermostatic valves. It's a mess, it's a lot of work. You really wanna clean these regularly so you don't have any problems. It's a pretty simple procedure. What we're gonna do is we're gonna flush white vinegar through this boiler inside of this tankless water heater. And this white vinegar is gonna take off all that scale and really clean up that boiler so it's shiny and bright copper, just like it was the day you got it. And it's a pretty simple process. We're gonna use about three gallons of white vinegar. You do need to get a submersible pump, and there's a link on the bottom of this video to one that uh, you can get through Amazon. Uh, but basically about a you know 60 to $70 submersible pump is what you wanna buy. You're also gonna need a standard five gallon bucket. And then you're going to need a hose set too. This is a standard washer and dryer hose set that you can get at one of the big box stores. They also sell some kits that has everything you need in one. So let's All cut right. the video. So we wanted to zoom in the camera so you could see the parts and pieces here. Number one, before you do this, this flush, you want to double check that you've got a flush kit installed. If you don't have these two valves on your tankless water heater, you cannot do this operation. These basically look like a hose bib on the cold and the hot side, you need these. If you don't have these, stop watching the video, call your plumber, you gotta get these installed first before you do anything. I'm surprised by how many units get installed without these. These need to be here. Okay, first steps, we're gonna actually turn off the gas. Anytime you see a valve, uh, or pardon me, a, uh, yeah, a valve, that uh, if that valve is in line, that means it's on. If it's perpendicular, it's off. So we're gonna turn the, the uh, gas line off. We're actually gonna leave the power on to the unit so the electricity is still running to this unit. And then if you look on the side here, this plumber of ours, uh, this, this house is a remodel we did about a year ago, has done a good job. These blue lines, this is the cold water side coming into the water heater. This red side is the hot lines going into the house. We're gonna turn these again in uh, perpendicular to the pipe, pretty straightforward. And we're gonna turn them both off. So now there is no cold going into the hot water heater and there's no uh, hot going out. Okay, so first thing I wanna do is actually I'm gonna open this valve a little bit. Hopefully I won't hit the camera with the pressure. Nope, just a little bit of water in that system. We're gonna drain that water off. Uh, there's not much in there. That's just how much water was in the system. Next thing we're gonna do is open the cold side. Now we're actually gonna get a little more because we've broken the vacuum on that on that thing. So this is just the water that was in the tank itself. Now grab yourself a, uh, a Leatherman or another uh, type of tool. We love these Leatherman Scala tools. Everybody in my company owns one of these. And we're just gonna turn this little, um, uh, what do we call this thing? This is, this is the pre-filter for the unit. We're gonna take the pre-filter out now and check it before we do the flush. And you can see all this is is just this little Bitty stainless steel inline pre filter. Gosh, I'm having troubles getting out of there. There we go. Maybe you can see that on the camera. All that is is just a little pre filter, and it's pretty clean. There's not much on there, it's just a little bit of grit on there. And the only, the only way to clean that, or the only, the easy way to clean that is just drop that in a bucket of water, clean it up, you're good to go. We're actually going to put it in for the flush. And then we're gonna check it again at the end just to make sure that we didn't uh, clog it with any sediment that came out of the system. So back to the, uh, the ingredients. We need to, before we start this, we need to go down to the uh, local uh, grocery store and pick up about three gallons of cheap distilled white vinegar. I'm using just standard 5% acidity, nothing special here. A Couple bucks a gallon, we need about three gallons of this, four gallons of that, something in that range. 
And then we need that five gallon bucket and I actually poured a couple gallons of the vinegar already into this, into this bucket right here. We're gonna pour one more gallon in here. So now we've got about three gallons ready to go. Bear with me for one second here. Okay, so that's going. Next, we need our sump pump. This sump pump is gonna sit in the bottom of this bucket. And this bucket that I've got is a, a nice flush kit that uh, you'll see a link to on Amazon. It keeps the bottom of the sump out of the uh, very bottom of the bucket. Unfortunately, I've used this one a bunch and you can see my valves have rusted a little bit. You do a real good job of cleaning these when you're done. We wanna connect this up to the cold side so that we're running the vinegar through the pre-filter first. And uh, I hope that this rusty one is gonna work. It may be time for me to uh, upgrade these hoses. We're about to find out. Now, we're gonna run a line from the hot side right back into the tank. So all we're doing is we're making a big continuous loop, nothing special. Okay, that's it. Now let's plug the uh, tank in and let it run. Think you plug it in for me back there? I'm kind of like Cinderella, the squirrels help me out over here. Oops. Yeah, see that's my, that's my problem on this one. Let me tighten this up just a little bit more. Let's go back to the handy skeleton tool and see if we can get it tightened. Ah, not quite big enough. Dang it. Pair of channel locks, that would have helped me greatly last time. So here's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna tighten this up a little bit. We had a little bit of rust on here and we wanna tighten that up until we got a good seal. All right, if you'll plug that pump in now. All right, now we're pumping real good. So we wanna let this thing run for about 60 minutes to an hour. Uh, or 60 minutes is an hour, pardon me. 60 minutes to an hour and a half. Uh, at, at a minimum of an hour, hour and a half is probably a little better. All we're doing is just recycling that vinegar through the boiler, getting any scale off of there. And then we're all done. We're gonna do the exact same process to hook it up, except in reverse. We're gonna undo these. We're gonna close these valves. Then we're going to open up the cold and the hot side after these are, are shut off. Then we're gonna turn the hot back on, or pardon me, turn the gas line back on. We're also gonna pop that filter out one last time, just make sure it's nice and clear. Real simple operation. You really wanna do this to maintain your tankless water heater's life. A tankless water heater really should last 20, 25, maybe even 30 years if they're maintained. And as long as you do this on a regular basis, you're not gonna have any problems out of yours. That's really double the life of a tank water heater, plus all the benefits of increased efficiency and of course, endless hot water, which makes a big difference if you've got a big family that's taking lots of showers right after one another. Thanks for joining me, everybody. We'll see you next time.